Thanks for joining me on episode 1058 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. I'm Robert Raymond Riopel, and I challenge you to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence and impact the world by using your time, your talent, and your treasures to live out your calling. Having the ability to improve consistently over time is key. And one of the ways to be inspired to do that is to listen to this, the Inspired Stewardship Podcast with my friend, Scott Mater. And then the third, and I would say probably the most common type, is the conforming perfectionist. This is the person that believes that everyone around them, everyone in their friendship circle, everyone in their family circle, society in general, expects them to be perfect. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's episode about investing in yourself by stewarding your time, I talk with you about why good enough is better than perfect. I talk about why you can think about better versus perfect to begin to move forward. And I also share why perfectionism is a sign of insecurity. As we talk about stewarding your time, wouldn't it be great if you could support this podcast and do it without just taking too long? Turns out you can. not All you have to do is use inspiredstewardship.com slash Amazon when you're ready to make a purchase via Amazon and a small commission will come back to support the show just that quick. If you enjoy the show when you are ready to buy from Amazon, just use inspiredstewardship.com slash Amazon. It's what you do good enough to put out into the world. You know, the truth is, I think a lot of people struggle with perfectionism. They struggle with this idea that nothing they do is ever good enough to be out into the world, to, to be something that other people look at. Because if it's not perfect, if everyone doesn't look at it and say, this indeed is perfect, there's no grammar errors, there's no spelling errors, there's no ums or ahs. If it's a spoken event, there's no edits that are obvious in a video. You've done it in one take, and it's surely perfect. And the truth is that there's really no such thing as perfect in that kind of mentality. There's nothing that you can put out into the world that will please everyone, especially if you include yourself in that everyone. The truth is, oftentimes we see our own errors, our own mistakes, our own issues worse than anyone else sees them. We see things in ourselves and in our own work that other people overlook and don't even notice. The number of times that I've seen people call something out and say, oh, I messed this up, when in reality no one else notices or cares is amazing. And working with clients, I see this struggle all of the time. There's story after story that you can read about famous people that we would all look at as truly gifted who have destroyed their own work or not put things out into the world, or we discover works after they pass away that then get out into the world and everyone recognizes as genius because of this idea of holding things back until they're perfect. The truth is, Good enough and done is always better than perfect and not done or perfect nothingness. The truth is that doing the work is better if you put it out into the world than if you just hold it yourself. So one of the things that I've done to reframe that in my own mind, because I am a perfectionist. I am someone that wants to put out perfection into the world. But if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you'll notice there's mistakes in it. There's ums, there's ahs, there's edits I've missed. There's other things because I've reframed and said, I don't have to aim for perfect. I just have to aim for better. Am I getting a little better today than I was yesterday? 
And I truly feel like if I go back and listen to the first 100 episodes and I go listen to the last 100, I've gotten better at podcasting. When I think about other things that I do, I'm trying to get, at first glance, it may seem like that's a cop out, but the truth is better is very different than perfect. It's not a synonym. It's not, doesn't mean the same things. Better is a journey. You can't arrive at better. It's simply about improving by small steps every single day an incremental improvement rather than this massive unachievable goal. If you're trying to get healthy and today you walk 10 steps further than you did yesterday, that's better. If you're trying to get healthy and today you ate one less potato chip than you did yesterday, that's better. The little achievements can be recognized and celebrated if you're aiming to be better to do something imperfectly than to do nothing flawlessly. That's a quote from Robert Schuller. The truth is to be imperfect is to be vulnerable. You can think about getting better and it's okay if it's not perfect. You can keep moving forward if you're trying to get better. You can't if you're trying to be perfect. You know, the truth is I, I love the work that's being done right now about perfectionism and how there's a lot of research out there about how true perfectionists, even the ones that are very successful, they're successful despite their perfectionism, not because of it. Perfectionism can show up as workaholics, as people with eating disorders, OCD, people who overexercise, people who have all or nothing thinking, procrastinators, the people that say all the time what they should have done, those who are critical of themselves and others, those who have depression. And I'm not saying those things are caused by perfectionism, but the two things go hand in hand. Because See, there's three flavors of perfectionism. There's a self-blaming perfectionist. This is someone who sets unattainable, rigid, and real unrealistic expectations for themselves. This is the person who they could win a Grammy award and they'll talk about, yeah, but it took me this long to do it. They could do something that is recognized universally as awesome and they'll still downplay it. The second type is the taskmaster perfectionist. This person sets these same rigid and unrealistic expectations, but they then extend them to everyone around them, their peers, their coworkers. If you've ever had one of these people as a boss, they're really hard to please. And then the third, and I would say probably the most common type, is the conforming perfectionist. This is the person that believes that everyone around them Everyone in their friendship circle, everyone in their family circle, society in general expects them to be perfect. It often comes out of a need to please others. And the truth is, that kind of perfectionism can be debilitating because you never please everyone. No matter what you do, you can't please everyone. Brene Brown has done a lot of work in this area where she talks about the fact that to overcome perfectionism, we have to make a journey from what will people think to I am enough. So you have to have some sense of vulnerability and self-confidence at the same time. You have to have a recognition that you can give yourself a break, that you can be kind to yourself and to others. It's not an excuse to do nothing. And in fact, Getting better can be the thing that drives you forward. Instead, it's the recognition that maybe good enough and done truly is better than perfect and in my head. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. If you like this episode on the stewardship of time, be sure to sign up for our stewardship of time tips series by going to inspiredstewardship.com. 
com slash time or texting 44222 time tips and that'll get you our best tips on stewarding your time until next time invest your time your talent and your treasures develop your influence and impact the world